The train at platform four is the 1430 LNER Azuma service to Edinburgh. So we are on a Class 800 Azuma service to Edinburgh Waverley and then we'll go across to Glasgow because we're going to Model Rail Scotland. So it's been two years since the last show took place at the SEC in Glasgow. So at the show we've got 30 layouts and even more traders and manufacturers. Now on top of the fantastic level of workmanship on the layouts, I'm looking forward to some of the announcements. So Mark, we have made it. We are here at the Scottish Exhibition Campus for Model Rail Scotland. It's been two years. What can we expect inside the show? Well, I think it's looking to be a, a superb show this year. There's lots of layouts, um, some really nice, um, good quality layouts from uh, what I can see. We're going to have a, a, a good day here. There's lots of, um, lots of traders as well, so I think it could potentially be an expensive day. <laughs> Um, and of course lots of societies. Um, it's one of those all-rounded events. I mean, I've been coming to this show for over 25 years. Um, and every year I love it because I'm seeing something different. I, I see quite a few layouts at this show that I don't usually see elsewhere in the country. So it's always a, an excitement. It's an adventure to come up on the train, for example. We brought lovely weather with us today as well. Yep. Don't jinx it too much, it was snowing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, of course, apart from the fantastic Scottish outline layouts, we've got the manufacturers are back at shows at last after Indeed they two are. long there's years. A, a good selection of uh, manufacturers here this year. Not everybody's here, but there's a good selection of manufacturers. Um, I have a feeling there's one or two announcements due as well. So we'll have more on that a little bit later as well. I think we should go and find out what they are and see what the layouts Absolutely. Um, have to offer. Come join us. Tony's Trains of Rugby is located at Hillmorton Locks on the outskirts of Rugby. We are open Tuesday to Saturday 10 till 5 but closing early on Saturday at 4 o'clock. We stock Hornby Backman, Graham Farish, Pico, Gage Master, Haljan, Oxford and Oxford Diecast, Cure Scale and more. We also have a large selection of second hand models to suit all budgets. You can either visit us in store or reach me on 01788 543 442. Visit our website tonystrainsofrugby.com or find us on Facebook.
So we may be here in the centre of Glasgow, but we're about to head to deepest, darkest Southern Railway territory with uh, Chris Goff, um, Cathay Sidings. Beautiful layout that you've got here. Chris, tell us a little bit about the layout and how long it's taken you to put together. Well, it started uh, around about 2014, somewhere there, there, um, and it was my first venture into P4. Um, in fact, what you see here is every piece of track I've built in P4, apart from about 300 mil of test track to start with. Um, and um, it's grown probably about another four, six foot over the years but, um, since then. But yeah, it's... it's um, my interest in Southern Railway stems from when I was a child. Um, loved the locos to start with and then spent a year down in Plymouth when I was at university um, and discovered the various branches of the East Devon. And, um, that's where the interest came from. So when I went to build a layout, it was always going to be Southern Railway and it was almost always going to be with an arm type, that, that area. So um, that's why we're here and um, whilst I'm amongst a bunch of East of Scotland people. Um, I do like to fly the Southern flag with them um, and, and make them behave um, in, a, in a Southern Railway manner, shall we say. Now the layout's set in the 1930s um, and you operate to 1930s practice, don't you? And with, with true realism. Yep, correct. So we've got a full set of block instruments. We have um, a electronic token, as the line would have had back in 1930. We're fully signalled um, and the line will not move without the token out and the various correct block instruments in the right, uh, pulled off in the right order, shall we say. Um, so all the signaling has to be done properly um, and we operate to a 1930 Southern Railway rule book with a 1932 set of bell codes. I was going to say, you've got bell codes going between the various sections of the layout, so that adds to a, a, a new dimension for the, the visitor experience. Um, well, we think so, yeah. I mean, what, what we're trying to achieve is to operate the railway in a prototypical manner. So we've got a signal box at either end and we've got a signal box in the middle. And they talk to each other via bell codes and I try not to let them talk to each other by, uh, by mouth, quite frankly. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's proper communication, there's a proper set of bell codes, they've all got to be done in the correct order and the, the instruments need to be switched accordingly. How many operators does it require? Uh, it takes five of us actually, one at either end in the signal box and the fiddle yards, one person in the, in the signal box in the middle and that's a, the biggest workload on the layout. Um, then we've got a driver and we've got a shunter driver because the sidings are always in shunt so we can always keep something hopefully moving for the people that are sat watching basically. And you've got a timetable that you operate to as well I gather. Uh, yes, there are 35, 36 moves in a 24 hour period. Um, they're all timed. The layout has a clock that um, runs to uh, 12 times normal speed apart from when the token is out when it slows down to two, three times normal speed. So like the real railway, we have to um, try to stay within the timetable in with our, in within our operations. And how many uh, locomotives do you operate on the, uh, on the layout? Uh, there are 10, all told. Um, a couple of three that are from people within the group, um, and then the rest are all mine. Um, they're all P4, so they're either, um, like the M7s are Hornby bodies that I put a new chassis on with new wheels and gearbox um, to get to the P4 level. Um, um, and there's a couple of kits as well, just sort of to round out the various loco types that we operate. Um, mainly it's M7s and G6s, which pretty much would have been there at that time. We do send a couple of 700 class black motors down because they're lovely little models. Um, and I just um, bend the rules slightly because they actually would have been too heavy for the Sidmouth branch in real life, but it's fine and I'm going to do that. I was going to ask what was your favourite engine, but I have a feeling I know which one that is. Certainly that 700 is lovely, actually. We've got two of them and, and uh, they're beautiful models. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with the M7 because typical 044, very difficult to get in balance and keep in balance so but, but they either run beautifully and I think they're lovely or they run terribly and I curse them. <laughs> Is it mainly freight that you operate? Um, it's kind of mixed I mean it's most of the workings are freight but we do a local and a through passenger service quite regularly as well because the branch um, actually would have had two through, through trains um, all the way from Waterloo taking holiday people to either Sidmouth or Exmouth. So you've got Maunsell coaches that um, have come down the main line and then you've got the local set, which is a kit of, of sort of really quite old coaches that would have just 
backwards and forwards between Sidmouth Junction and Sidmouth or Sidmouth Junction and Exmouth. So actually the fact that that line diverges beyond us gives me lots of scope in the timetable to run more passenger services than you perhaps would imagine for a single track line, basically. Now you've got lots to keep the, um, the viewers I focused on various parts of the layout from working signals, level crossings, but also some of the, the working practices that you have. So for example, you were showing earlier with the freight train coming in, there's a, a move which requires someone to wave a red flag, for example. Yeah, correct. I mean, it's again, what, what we're trying to do there is um, operate to a prototypical procedure. So that's stopping goods that, that can only access the sidings from the south. So first of all, freight has gone and south on the layout to be switched into the next northbound train to come to the sidings. That train, when it stops, will be brought to a stop at the home signal. Yep. It'll be pulled forward on a red flag to talk to the signalman with the, the signal only dropped after the uh, train has come to a complete halt. Um, signalman would have a chat with the driver, make sure they're happy that they're only going into the forward block to make sure that, that for, for the shunt purposes and not to carry on all the way to Sidmouth Junction. Um, once that's established, green flag is shown as per the rule book. Um, shunt signal is pulled off to allow the train to head into the block just for the shunt purpose. And then it goes backwards into the siding and all, to be honest, within the 1930 rule book, um, which was kind of the starting point for how we operated when we set the layout out in the first place. Well, it's a fascinating layout. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Alex Yates, and this is TMC, the model centre at Beck Hole near Whitby. We're down at the new mail room at TMC, where we can ship your orders worldwide. Here at TMC, we do many limited editions. We've got our 24 and a half ton mineral wagons that have just come into stock and we've got our G5 that is due in summer next year and we've got many other limited editions available on our website. Here at TMC we stock all major brands including Hornby and Backman and we also have a large range of pre-owned models all available in store and on our website. We offer customization services when you buy a model from us such as Real Coal, Cab Crew, DCC Sound, DCC and any little customization features that you want on your models. We also offer a weathering service. When you buy a model off our website we have tick box options so you can spec up the model as much or as little as you want. You can pre-order all future releases on our website with free postage over £50 and no deposit required. Whether you're a customer, old or new, visit us in person or visit our website, themodelcentre.com. We hope to see you soon. I find myself once again on the Acura scale stand. It's every time we have a show now. I think you've always, you always bring something new out. So from this time, what have we got on the stand? Well, we have, the first thing we have, which is the most important thing, is all the progress of all the projects we've been doing over the last couple of years. So it's been two years since we got to do any show, and in that time, we've been working on a lot of projects. So today we've been able to show off the production samples of our Class 55 Deltics. They're about to go on the ship in the next 10 days, and they're on the way to customers down. It'll take about six weeks to come from China. We have our decorated samples on Class 92, which are in very early stages of production now. Uh, our Mark 5's decorated samples, we're looking forward to them in the summer. Um, and then on to the Class 37, we had the first decorated samples arrive on Tuesday, and it's the first time we've shown them here at the show today. So we have a BR Blue and BR Green one. And we're also showing all the different varieties of body style decorated manners, which is obviously good for uh, Harmony Magazine as well. You guys have one on your stand for your limited edition. Um, and then other stuff like the Mark 2B, we have the first decorated sample of that, West Coast Livery, that's been very popular. Um, our HYA IAA wagons, which are due in the next 10 days, they're just nearly in, in the port now. Children's siphons, HUOs, HAAs, 
and of course our big announcement which was the class 31 which we announced on Wednesday and we to you guys in, in a really good video and I was going to say you're saving the best to last you're saving the best to last always <laughs> build up to the finale so um, they've gone down tremendously well since we launched them on Wednesday um, and we obviously are doing the 10 liveries on our first run and we've been lots of feedback lots of people saying well where's X, Y, Z livery but we will get around to them too don't worry about that and how popular has the 31 been since you've launched it? Really, really popular. Um, we we knew it would be one of more popular models to do, but we haven't quite prepared for the reaction that's received, and people have been very, very positive about it. What they like is, you know, it's a very nice design. It captures the essence of the Class 31, all the different accurate detail representations, but also the standard equipment that you get with it, from everything from a separate working fan motor with a separate motor for that, all the way into uh, the price point, 169.99 for DCC Ready or DC, and then 269 for DCC Sound, and also has stuff like, you know, the flange grill sensor and stuff like that. So we're, every model we do, we try to innovate with something new, and, and that's gone down really well. That's offered such great value for money too. And so it really tells that enthusiasts are behind these products because you try and innovate every time. It seems there's something new with every new model you do. Yeah, I mean, we're very passionate about what we do and we put everything we, we can into our models. Um, Gareth worked on the Class 31, it's one of his favourite classes and he's been around them all his life basically um, when he got into trains for the first time. and. You know, we had a fantastic knowledge base on it, but also, you know, we're passionate about the models themselves and all the standard equipment that go into them. And it's about pushing the envelope forward, and that's what we want to keep doing. And every model we do, we want to make it better and, you know, really push the boundaries of what we can do with detail and features and also build that into an overall package that's the best bang for the buck for the customers as well. And in terms of new models arriving, do we have a rough timetable as and when locomotives particularly are going to come out? Yeah, so obviously the Delta is the next one to come, um, so that goes in the boat in the next 10 days or so. Um, we just had some final little tweaks to make um, on play feedback on the production samples. So we're looking about eight weeks for them. Um, 92, we're looking at qu third quarter this year. Manor's about the same, and the 37s will be arriving in the quarter three and into quarter four next year. The demand for the 37s has been so big that it looks like we're actually going to have to batch them into different batches. So what we're looking at at the moment is putting a time tail together um, as they were announced. So the 37.6 and 37.0, then onto the Scottish one and the 37.4. So they're all looking for this year. Mark 5 is over the summer. Mark 2 is the end of this year. Uh, the HYAs IAAs are about two weeks away, including the cut down ones. Uh, the HAA hoppers are about uh, five weeks away. They're on the sea at the moment as well. And that'll be a rolling announcement into the um, HCAs, the CDAs, and MHAs, and the ballast uh, wagons and, and the spoil wagons. And then stuff like the Siphon G will be later this year. 31, we've said, uh, mid next year. Um, so there's a, there's a good timetable of stuff coming out as well. And then obviously with the Irish side as well, we've uh, marked tools for there for the end of this year. And then we also have um, Magnus Side Wagon, which we launched recently, which will be due later, I think, in the third quarter of this year as well. I did have to laugh because I think I've got most things on this stand pre ordered for my own layout, my own personal layout. And then coming up on the East Coast, I thought I'm safe from the Class 92, but we saw three in three yeah, different yeah. liveries. So I think I'm going to have to add those to my uh, list yeah. now as well. Um, the great thing about the 92, obviously, it's very versatile. So not only will you get a, a lot of people associate with the West Coast, but obviously, for many years, they ran a tour rail network. And stuff with the um, the Mark 5s, they have been diverted down the East Coast Main Line, and yeah, I know they're working on route learners on the uh, East Coast Main Line at the moment. Uh, the most popular we seem to be a lot of the current ones, so the GB Rail Freight, um, which obviously is what you probably saw, and the Caledonian Sleeper, really popular, as well as the Triple Grey, uh, as you were originally introduced, is always really popular in every, and I think they really pop in those colour schemes, especially as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Fran, for your time as ever. While we get on and see what else is at the show, I think I'm going to have to fill out one of the pre-order forms. Step right this way, sir. We'll look after you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Model Rail Scotland. It's a, a personal pleasure for me to be back on the Backman stand after three years away from it, but uh, if only for five minutes. So what we're going to announce is a partnership between the Backman Collectors Club and Locomotion Models. Just so you're aware that the sound versions will be available from the Backman Collectors Club and the DCC ready versions of what we are about to unveil will be available from Locomotion Models. So without further ado, I ask my colleagues, past and present, to unveil what we're waiting for.
It's a model of DB Cargo Class 90, built in 1986, 9028 Sir William McAlpine. He was a railway enthusiast. He was the first chairman of the Railway Heritage Trust. He was a preservationist and he was also a railway modeler. His Scottish connection was he was head of operations for McAlpines, the famous building and construction company as director of operations in Scotland up until his retirement. He was also the previous owner of the Flying Scotsman. He passed away in March 2018 and this loco was named by DB Cargo at the National Railway Museum on the 11th of January 2019. He was a remarkable man, a fellow modeler, a railway enthusiast, and we present our tribute to him. Models will be available on sale in the hall, online, and through normal channels, through the Batman Collectors Club and Locomotion Models from 11.15 today. So Dennis, tell us about the special locomotive you've unveiled today. Well, as part of Locomotion Models, in partnership with the Batman Collectors Club, uh, we wanted to do our tribute to Sir William McAlpine, who was uh, very well known in railway preservation. And the locomotive itself, the connection with the museum is that not only was he a previous owner of Flying Scotsman, one of our most iconic exhibits, but it was actually named in the museum um, in 2019. So uh, on a special train working out of King's Cross, bringing all the guests to the name in, Flying Scotsman was at the head and on the way back, Sir William McAlpine did the honours and took the passengers back to uh, King's Cross. And of course, he was a prolific pres preservationist. He was. He had his own railway down in uh, Buckinghamshire, uh, quite a famous uh, uh, line now because it's appeared on the uh, Great British Railway Challenge several times um, down, down in the South Bucks. He, um, he built it basically from scratch in, in part of his uh, land and rescued the very last McAlpine locomotive, contractor's locomotive, which they used on major works, uh, from being scrapped. And he bought it for £100, and that loco is still giving service today. So 90028 is the new model that you're producing. It's available in two formats, isn't it? It is. It's available from Locomotion Models as a DCC ready model, uh, and that's at 229.95. And uh, the DCC sound version is available only from the Batman Collectors Club, and that I think is uh, 329.95. Smith, uh, and I'm the owner of yeah, Smith's Model Railways. Based in uh, Sheringham in Norfolk, um, just on the main high street. Really, really close to the North Norfolk Railway. So we stopped from N-Gage to O-Gage. Brands like Pico, Graham Farish, uh, Hornby, Batman. Just launched uh, our new Lorty card uh, just after uh, lockdown when we reopened. So we also offer these uh, gift vouchers. You can either contact us via our telephone, uh, email, or with our contact form on our website. Small layouts in the show, joking aside, massive 00 ga 009 gauge layout for Hevog. Now, Rob, can you tell us a bit more about this fantastic layout? Well, this is uh, a model of uh, Beth Gallet Station on the Welsh Island Railway, and it's pretty much you know, as the real place is. There's a few scale compromises have been made, but 
platform length, for example, is the full length. You are seeing 10 carriage trains behind the, the Bay of Garrett's just as the, the real restored railway operates. Uh, and the idea is to try and show trains in the scenery, not just to have the, the station and the passing loop, uh, but the, the big feature of Beth Galaxy is what is behind as the trains climb up the 1 in 40, around this double S bend, through the huge cutting mower, uh, and, so, and so you get three chances to, to see the trains. Uh, and in fact, at some points, if, if you're doing the layout and if we're operating it uh, well enough, you'll, you'll see two trains heading apparently in the same direction, but they're actually heading in different directions. One's, one's going towards Carnarvon and one's going towards Port Maddox. So that was the idea, was to, to set a railway in the landscape. Now, I suppose for those at home looking at the layout, it looks like a giant traditional tail chaser almost. It's a big loop, but it's actually an end-to-end, -end, isn't it? It is an end-to-end. -end. We did consider if we could try and make it continuous run somehow, uh, but there is a, a difference in, in gradient of about sort of, uh, three inches between one end and the other. And we looked at sort of installing some kind of ski ramp in between, but realized it wasn't just practical. So, so yes, the, the fiddle yard is divided at the back and trains come in, come from, in from each direction and leave in both directions. And of course, there's three control panels and three operators. Can you tell me a bit more about this operation? Well, there's the main operating uh, for the public side is done from the, the center, uh, where there are actually two operating positions, but um, because the train's running for, for so long and you can just leave it to, to run, you can you know, generally split yourself and manage both. And then each uh, end of the fiddle yard has somebody working that, and running the loop goes around and preparing the next train to depart. But it, because it's such a long layout, it, it can take two, three minutes for a train to slowly wend its way around. And so it's not too frantic. You get lots of time to stand and chat, which is what we all really enjoy about exhibitions, isn't it? Absolutely. And of course, the scenery on this layout is second to none. And that is helped by the fact it's such a deep layout. Where do you start with a layout like this with scenery? Well, the most important thing is to remember that you have to show graduations of, of height. You, you can't have the track flat on, on the baseboard. So underneath it, is, it was all started off by making a, a hard a plywood outline of the track, which is up on stilts. We got that to build a gradient in very carefully to make sure it was even, reduce it on curves, make sure there were no nasty spots where it would get particularly tight. Uh, and then just create the curves around it. And we're very, very traditional. It's done with uh, you know, plywood formers, chicken wire on top, and then plaster bandage, uh, brown paint, uh, and then lots of texture for the, the scatter on top, and particularly because it's Welsh moorland, you want the, the long sort of burnt grass on the top, and that effect's actually done with uh, old carpet underlay. It's a really hairy carpet underlay, dyed a very, very yellowy green, teased out, spread out, and lots of other stuff put on top to try and create that illusion of and there's some static grass uh, out there as well. But um, the, the, the main thing with, with all our model, I think, is that you're just trying to create an overall Im impression. There's, there's, there's no particular one thing, I hope, that, that, that stands out uh, in, in either way. I mean, you, you look closely at anything, you see it's, it's, not, it's not, I would say, it's top draw modeling, but if you can get enough of it all to the same standard, I think you create an overall effect. So I think it's fantastic, it's absolutely stunning. If I could pin you down, do you have a favorite part to it? I think it's probably, uh, am I allowed two? Yeah, you are, I, absolutely. I, I would say that <laughs> the bridges at the North End Station, because one, one of the things that was significant or that we had to try and capture is the fact that when they rebuilt the railway, it was rebuilt on a much grander scale, the embankments were widened. They've tried to use you know, some of the heritage, automatic, Beth Gellert and South Snowden railway structures that were there in the early uh, 1900s where they can, but a lot of it had to be rebuilt in, in concrete. So you've got that blend of concrete, which we want sort of brand new, starting to get weathered with the old stone. So like that, and, and the bridge, the famous bridge to nowhere, which was never ever used, which you, everyone who's ever driven into Beth Gellert will recognize you when you go under really proud of that. I, I had nothing to do with that. Well, it was built by somebody with a lot of artistic talent. Um, so I suppose my other favorite thing is, is the housing estate, which, which took a lot of research and years to build each of those houses uh, individually. So those have been my two favorites, if you, if you had to pin me down. It's very nice. And finally, 009 gauge. Your layout's running superbly today. 
how do you keep it running? I think the key is when you build the layout in the first place to pay particular attention to things like your, your track joints and alignments. We are a big fan of metal dowels and the sports so they absolutely cannot move laterally. And clean wheels. Um, and most, most of the locomotive stock is, is brass kit, so it's, it's got weight for adhesion and gravity, but just keep everything clean. Um, yeah, just yeah, attention to detail when, when you're building it will always pay off. Well, it's absolutely stunning, and if I can do anything like this on my own personal layout, I'll be chuffed to bits. So, Rob, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And I'll let you get on. Thank you. So we're here at Model Rail Scotland on the all-new Hellian stand. Very impressive new stand for the uh, return to the show here in Scotland. Thanks, we're really pleased with it and we've had a great reaction to it. It's, uh, it's a big step up from what we had before and uh, this is going to be our stand at Wally as well. So, uh, yeah, it makes a big difference to us. Now you've got an array of wonderful models here, which we'll talk about shortly. You've also, in the lead-up to the show this week, announced uh, a couple of new models. Yeah, this week we've announced uh, the BR prototype 10,800. Uh, which is the, probably the last in uh, the, the last remaining gap in BR locos. Um, it's a work, but a, it's a development from our Class 16 that we did a few years ago. Uh, but it's obviously the spec is a bit higher because things have moved on since that was released. Um, but when we did the 16, we got quite a lot of the material for 10,800 as well, and it's been sort of sitting awaiting the right awaiting the right time. Uh, but it's going to be really nice. I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a pretty logo, but it's a, uh, it's got a lot. It's got a lot of character. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. And then um, we've announced a new 26, new class 26 in double O. Um, starting off with the Inverness one with the twin headlights, the car, the car headlights, um, and uh, that's the that's the sort of vanguard of a new generation of class 26s uh, that will come after it with. Uh, completely upgraded spec, finer details, um, things like engine room lights, cab lights, uh, individually switched headlights on the Inverness one. Um, and uh, for the first time it'll have a, a pop-out roof panel so that you can get to the uh, decoder really easily. And it'll have a, like the 47, it'll have a, uh, it'll have a speaker space, a, a proper cradle for the speakers so you can just drop them in when you need to. So things like the twin, the twin headlights, they'll light up on the front, for example. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, and they'll be individually controlled as well. So when a local's in a depot, they don't usually didn't tend to have the headlights switched on, so we'll be able to run it around a depot with the with the marker lights on, but not the headlights. Now you've also I mentioned and alluded to some of the models that we've got here, some of which we're seeing for the first time at the show here in Glasgow. So can you just talk us through a couple of those? Yeah, of course. Um, there's a, a couple of things that have not been seen before. There's the uh, first sample of the. Uh, our new 37O with the cutaway buffer beam cowling, which is sort of a later version, 70s, 80s onwards, which opens up a huge range of liveries and versions that we've not been able to do before. Um, so we've got the first sample of that, and it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's a hand-painted sample at the moment, but it's, but it's a nice job. Brian Daniels has painted it for us. It's lovely. Um, and that's, um, that's progressing really well. And obviously that's got the upgraded spec as well with the plug-and-play decoder and all that sort of thing. Um, we've also got um, both the double O and the O gauge versions of the Class O2 shunter, which there seems to be a lot of excitement about. Like, quite a few people coming up asking when that's going to be ready. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then we've got um, an array of 26s and 27s, factory decorated samples. Um, and we've got our Class 121 DMU. I also notice you've got the um, some decorated sides to your forthcoming Mark II O gauge coaches. Yes, um, the uh, the Mark II um, we've uh, it's slightly delayed the Mark II because the factory that was going to produce them has closed down. So we've had to move all the tooling. The uh, tooling's ready; it's approved and ready to go. We were actually working on the decoration, and the factory's closed down. So we've had to shift it to one of our other existing factories, which. It's probably a good move actually because that factory um, does a lot of our old gauge stuff already. So, uh, but it has delayed the project. Uh, but we're we're really impressed with how it's turned out. We're, I think people will be 
really pleased with it when that comes. Um, you've got some 37 fours there as well, which are decorated, which again, I don't think we've necessarily seen before with the, the weathering on the 37 four there. They're, they're fresh from Denmark. Um, even I hadn't seen them till this weekend. So um, yeah, we're working on a, a third batch of 37 fours. I mean, it's uh, unprecedented really. Um, the, and there's a couple of large logo ones, a couple of Ralph Freight ones. Um, and uh, it sort of fills in some of the gaps that we haven't done before. Like there's a, a Welsh large logo, 37.4, that we haven't done before. But they're immensely popular. I mean, every time we do them, they, they sell out quickly. So, yeah. Um, and um, the other things in the cabinet we've got that are coming soon, the Class 56, uh, which are on the boat at the moment. Um, and the, the new Class 50s, again, a third batch of Class 50s. Uh, and they've just landed in Denmark this week. I mean, it's, it's really good, isn't it, how popular these models have been. Um, have they surpassed your expectations? Well, certainly, the, the, I think the fifth, we, we knew the 50 would be popular just because it's a real cult, it's got a real cult following. But I think it's even surprised us by how, how popular it's been. And the th same with the 37.4, really. And I, we, I have a suspicion that we'll be in a similar situation with the 56, just because ever since we first announced it, we've had loads of people genuinely excited about it so yeah I think it's gonna be good. Ben thank you. I'm Anthony of AGL Model Rail Store in Leighton Buzzards, Bedfordshire. We stock the whole ranges for N, O, and O, all the major brands for DC modelers and DCC modelers. We have a full DCC sound install, which can include sound, smoke, and lights. We offer a range of Pico 009 exclusives, and we are also UK's biggest importer of Batman USA Thomas and Friends models. We've got great links to the M1. We have mail order, which you can order through the website www.agrmodelrailstore.co.uk. We're actually just off the Lake Buzzard High Street. We're in High Street Muse. So if you look for Costa Coffee, directly opposite, you can see us and the sign. <laughs>
a lightly working ground signal. That's very subtle. Thank you. <laughs> in terms of the rolling stock that you've got on the layout, um, you've got some interesting surprises we've noticed running up and down on the layout. We have, we have got a couple of little cameos. Uh, uh, one in particular uh, that we really enjoyed preparing for this show uh, is Shane's APT, um, which he's uh, very nicely uh, made a magnetic front piece and have, has the nose, the nose lifted as if it's being dragged. Um, so we, we, found a, we found a great photo from Stenson Junction in, in 1987 of a, of a 25 with an APT half set coming through so we've based it on that as a, as a prototype it looks very effective and you know we've seen it moving through on the layout whilst we've been uh, filming today as well as the APT some of the other highlights that visitors to watch the layout at the shows when you're there can watch yeah I mean basically we what the, the the idea has been to, to do some uh, different speed link trains with um, with some of the best sort of ready to run um, wagons that have that have that have come out. It's, there's so much new stuff that's happened in the last two years since we were last at a show. I noticed, for example, that you've um, you're mixing and matching certain elements of stock. So, for yeah. example, the the mixed sprinter that we've had running back and forth on the layout as well. The attention to detail is is subtle and yet it makes such a difference. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think um, yeah. Obviously, the the, the, the 150 slash two centre car um, put in, into the 150 slash one uh, ends is yeah, it's, it's unusual. Um, I added. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but the the fairings on the front um, are from from Stenson models and the emergency coupling box as well. Um, so just little details like that that try and make a bit of a difference. And looking to the future, you've made a few alterations and added a few elements um, to the layout in recent times. Have you got more plans to to drive it forward? Oh, it's never never finished, right? Uh, there's another signal that needs to be added uh, here next to the next to the signal box. So I've got a I've got an idea of which one I'm going to do for that. There'll be a bracket um, uh, bracket signal there, and we've sort of we've made provision for that in the. Uh, in the operating console, but um, yeah, it's it's about really it's about having fun with friends and everybody being able to contribute a little bit of stock or um, come come along to the show. So with me is Ben Ando from uh, Revolution Trains. Ben, um, this week you've had two super new announcements. If you could just talk us through a couple of those, because there's um, some nuclear flasks and some DMUs. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll start with the diesel units. Um, we're offering both the 175 class and the class 180. Uh, the 175s are known as Caradias. They are suburban regional trains that are used in the northwest of England and Wales. Um, they start off northwest of England, but 
in more recent years they uh, became more widespread in South Wales and on the Welsh Marches line. Uh, we think that Welsh railways are really interesting, really exciting. Um, there's some lovely little locations that people I think will find really modelable and one of the missing links has been the 175 which is why we decided to do it. And they share a lot of family resemblance with the Class 180s as well. If you look at the CADs that we've uh, released you'll see that while the driving cars are very different with the much more aerodynamic, faster look on the 180, the intermediate cars are virtually identical and so for that reason it made sense if you're doing one to do the other and the 180s are a very interesting train they were a terrible train in service they caught fire they had huge software problems i think they were um, renowned for failing and causing problems for the operators and the first great western actually handed them back but I think they actually perversely almost will make a very attractive model. They look great, the styling I think is amazing. And they're five cars and they're a complete train. So for a lot of us who don't have a lot of space, they're the perfect train set train. Um, we're gonna put all the features you'd expect in. They'll have working lights, saloon interior lights, kinematic couplers, uh, power transfer couplers so that hopefully pickups won't be an issue. Um, and yeah, again, they've been surprisingly widespread. Great Western Main Line, uh, East Coast Main Line, Northwest England, and now most recently on the uh, Midland Main Line as well, which I think is also a very interesting railway and has been much overlooked. Are you doing them in double O and N, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Um, I know we're well known for doing N-gauge models, but increasingly we are seeing that there are opportunities for real niche items in double O gauge as well. I mean, we respect the existing double O gauge manufacturers a lot, but, but they're concentrating on you know the, the, the big ticket items. And we see things like the 175 and 180 as the kind of things that a smaller um, manufacturer like us can probably step up and offer. And you asked also about the nuclear flask wagon too. Um, so that has been really interesting. When we did the, the big uh, nuclear submarine fuel carriers, the KUAs with the, the four bogies on, we were very keen to sort of get, move on to doing the new nuclear flask wagons because actually they're the only ones you see on the network now. But um, there have been lots of management changes at DRS, they've become NTS, that slowed things down. So it's only now that we've been able to uh, offer that model. But yeah, um, we're doing those, I think, the um, 17518 is doing N-Gage followed quite quickly by double O. With the flask wagons, we're going to do double O first followed quite quickly by N. So as well as the new announcements, also you've got a wonderful display of um, yeah. models up and coming and you've got some on um, some C at the moment. So in terms of um, people watching this, the most imminent deadlines are that at the end of this weekend, that's Monday the 28th, we're closing the order book on the N-Gage Mark 5s in Caledonian Sleeper and Transpennine liveries and also the Southern Region General Manager Saloon Caroline in double um, once we close the order book, of course, that'll be it, but people can get them from retailers later. In terms of stuff that's actually arriving that people already will have paid for and ordered, we've got the 00 gauge IPA car carriers, twin sets and quads, and we've also got the FWA uh, Eco Fret container flats, again uh, in uh, VTG Green, which Freightliner use, and then in DB Red and GBRF Blue. So there's stuff coming in. There has been a bit of a hiatus. Um, we've had Chinese New Year, of course, which you'll know about. Um, we've also had, towards the tail end of last, Last year, a lot of um, delays to things, not just us, um, because of the ongoing lingering effects of COVID. But I get the sense that things are starting to ramp back up now in China, which is where the models are made. And shipping problems seem to be receding as well as, 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 as the whole of the world, if you like, starts to get back into kilter. So an exciting year ahead then? I hope so, I hope so. Um, in terms of the stuff that we've got that's coming that people will know about, I mean, at this show we were able to show for the first time the um, first EP samples of the Class 313 PEP units that we're doing in N-Gage. Um, we've got the Class 59 sample again. Um, things like the double O gauge uh, bow rails and super tenches and mullets, we've got those on show for the first time. These are all things that are moving through. And again, things that have taken longer in the last two years, we're hoping will take a little bit less time going forward. But I'm sure anyone will tell you, it's really difficult to give people any kind of accurate um, scheduling or time frame on these things, just because we don't know. Looking to the longer term, um, you mentioned last year that you were looking at the Class 93, of course. Yeah, the Class 93 is really interesting. So um, we've had some information through from Stadler now about what the real things are going to look like. We're very nervous about going too quickly to tooling for that because obviously we've all seen what happened, I mean, years ago with the Class 58. It, things can change at the last minute on the real railway and you might have a locomotive come out and then suddenly they realise it needs something else bolting on it or it needs a different grill in the side. So we've been very clear with Stadler, very clear with Rail Operations Group who are... Uh, 
uh, buying the locomotives that we want to get the models right and we want to get them right as they are in the end to service. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably go to Valencia later this year once the first locomotives are built or early next year to um, see what's happening. The first ones are, ex are scheduled to come in I think in July or August of 2023. By then I think we'll certainly have finalised our CAD and probably be ready to tool. But I think we're very tooling is where you spend the big money and we'd be very reluctant to spend too much money until we're really sure that all the details and how the things are going to look are nailed on. But on top of that, we've been looking at where we can get these things made, and we're looking at using some of the factories that produce some of the more high-end European models, because we want to try and raise the bar on what we've done before to make them the best model that we possibly can. I'm uh, Adam Davis of uh, Rails of Sheffield Limited. We're a family run business, we've been trading for over 50 years now. We've also been voted Retail of the Year for the last two years running. We sell any age, any gauge, tens of thousands of items for all man major manufacturers, continental, American, from you know your N gauge, Z gauge, right up to live steam, ride on. We do many in house exclusives uh, all available on our website railsofsheffield.com the address here is 21 to 29 chesterfield road sheffield sa0rl So I have found the tgauge.com stand and it's always a pleasure at any model railway show to find something rather unique and Alan you've brought the unique to the model railway show Thanks. with the BLT gauge layout. Okay. Now can you tell us a bit more about T-Gauge? Uh, T-Gauge it was uh, introduced to Japan in 2006 uh, then we brought it into the UK in 2009. We've just uh, we've grown the brand from just solely Japanese rolling stock uh, to include British and German and so on. And <laughs> I can understand sort of clap and junction with the guitar. What made you put it in a uh, baguette? Uh, we bought some items from a, a French gentleman, and he says I've got this one meter long uh, bit of flexi track stuck to a, an L-shaped piece of wood. Would you like that? Yeah, sure. It sat around for a couple of years, and then I thought, well, being French, let's, let's make a baguette, stick it in there, and we'll just have a bit of novelty factor to it. Wonderful. I mean, it's certainly novelty, that's for sure. Yeah. Stands out a mile. Yeah. Now, for the, I suppose for those at home who maybe aren't familiar with T-Gauge, what are some of the advantages? Uh, I think the main one is the size, really. Uh, you can get so much crammed into such a small, uh, small scale. Uh, the portability as well, uh, layouts can be any size from say A4 up to whatever you, you fancy, but yeah, certainly portability and size is good. I was going to say behind me we've got a few more traditional looking layouts, uh, yeah. can you tell me a bit more about the theme of those? Uh, this one directly behind you, this is the uh, Solverine coal mine in Germany, uh, this is built on polyurethane foam, expanding foam, uh, and it is based loosely on the Zolverine coal mine. This one here is Miyajima Island. This was built by my partner Lorraine Pritchard. Uh, it's Japanese themed and just shows off a couple of the Japanese buildings. It's based on the T-gauge uh, beachcomber layout, uh, which is just a, an off-the-shelf uh, pre-made uh, pre track plan. And I notice uh, we've got an LNER HST running on this lower layout. Right, yeah. That's fantastic. What other uh, modern image stock can you get in T-Gauge? Uh, modern image, we're, we're working on that. Uh, we've got uh, Class 67 in the EWS uh, livery, uh, but the LNER is probably the most modern at the current. Uh, we've got the, the Deutsche Bahn, the ICE train, the German uh, high-speed train. Uh, but we'll, 
we're continuing to grow the, the range and the colours and deliveries and so on. Wonderful. And I suppose for anyone at home who wants to get into T Gauge, where's the best, best place to find more? Best place is just simply tgauge.com. Just come to us and we'll uh, send it around the UK, around the planet, anywhere. Wonderful. Well, Alan, thank you very much for your time. No worries, thank you. Right, joining me now are Cav and Alex from Cav Alex Models. Um, guys, let's just talk about models that have just recently come through. Um, the BBAs and the BLAs you've just had delivered. Yep, we've had, uh, we've had them delivered recently. Uh, we've got the specials from Rails of Sheffield, which are the two uh, rail freight uh, sector delivery ones, which are exclusive to them and also the only two that were produced on British Rail in that livery. Really pleased with those. Uh, the sales have gone really well. Um, yeah, really happy. So what's next on the cards to arrive in the UK, Alex? Uh, the next one to arrive is the TEA. Um, we have a, a production model here, which the factory flew in especially for us to show today. Uh, the factory told us the other day they're due to be shipped next week, so subject to getting them on the container over here. We think it's probably going to be about eight weeks, hopefully, if everything goes to plan, um, that we'll then have to start distributing to customers that have pre-ordered them. And what liveries are you doing? We are doing uh, the total, which um, you can see there. Then we've got the plain grey, and then we have the weathered version for the TEA. And then we also have the KBA barrier wagons, which we use to move the, the new S stop. And I guess after that, it's the HAA project. The HAA, yeah. They're uh, due to start shipping next month. Um, we'll first batch will be the red rail freight ones, which have by far been the best sellers. They're really, really good looking wagon. And then the next uh, few batches that will be delivered will cover the, the other variants of the of the wagon, uh, the special deliveries, uh, for like the Scottish one in the blue. And, uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to uh, receiving them. I was going to say, you've got various liveries and you're doing some for um, various uh, retailers. Uh, yes, the uh, the HA project is exclusive to uh, KMS Railtech and Trains for You, um, but we're also doing some special ones for the locomotion at the National Railway Museum, which is a model of the first HA and the last HA, which uh, which are coming on very well. They look very good. They have different details to the standard ones, so we're looking forward to uh, seeing how they look. So you've done some really nice wagons, you've got some nice wagons in the pipeline, but also your first locomotive project in the pipeline. How's yes. that going? Very well. Obviously, I'm sure most people know that Cav and I are big 56 fans, so we're very, very excited about this. Um, we spoke to the factory uh, just yesterday, and the first shots out of the moulds are due early April, so we should have our first engineering prototype sample in April, which we're really looking forward to. Uh, then hope to have a running sample uh, ready for DEMU in July uh, with decorated samples later in the year. And, of course, you're doing all of the variations of the class 56 yes we are yes we're doing the what we call the four different versions so we call them series one which is 001 to 030 or 30 uh, series two which is 31 to 55 then we're doing series three which is 56 to 90 and then series four which is 91 to 135 so that covers all the variations for the first 30 romanian then the doncaster style cab that we built at, at doncaster and then the, the what we call the doncaster style version which covers 56 to 135 including those built at three and they're going to be available, I gather, in a kaleidoscope of colour. Yes, well, we were, for the, it was very difficult, actually, to narrow it down to the, the ones um, that we've chosen. But we wanted to capture the main ones, which are obviously BR Blue, Original Rail Freight, Red Stripe Rail Freight Sector. They were the main ones, we, a large logo, obviously, which we wanted to capture. And then a, a couple for, for the modern-day modeler, because we know that... They're still running today and we wanted to give something for as, as many models as possible. Now, as well as double O, you also do some N-Gage models as well. Uh, we do. Um, as you know, from the very beginning, we've tried to get into the N-Gage market. We've always said, whatever we do in double O, we're going to do in N. And it's, it was always very difficult to get off you know, the starting blocks with N. Um, but uh, Rails of Sheffield have very kindly um, offered to support an engaged project for us. So they've taken on our original PGA hopper wagon and shrunk it down to 2mm. And they are uh, 
very much uh, currently in progress to uh, to be delivered later in the year. Probably looking at quarter three this year. Guys, thank you. I'm Jack, and welcome to Hatton's Model Railways in with us. Here at Hans, we stock over 13,000 different product lines, and we also have a huge range of pre-owned items, ranging from everything from UK Outline, USA Outline, Japan. You can also sign up to daily notifications, so whenever we add new pre-owned stock, you can go straight to the website and get first dibs on those too. We also offer a trunk service here at Hans that enables you to purchase items and make sure you've secured them. We'll keep them here safely for you, and you can even combine them with other orders and have them all shipped out together. That even enables you to save on postage costs and it's great for overseas customers as well. So we're here in our curbside pickup lockers. So anyone who is local to Hattons, you can have your order placed online or over the phone and have it placed in one of our lockers, as you see here. Truly easy to just come and collect your key, pick it up any time of day, 24 seven, you can come pick up your order. Our customer experience team is available from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., seven days a week UK time. You can place orders, query anything, and you can also speak to our product expert team who are available to give you expert full-on guidance with our entire product range. You can get in touch via email, social media, live chat, or phone. So one of the major highlights at this year's Model Rail Scotland is Blair Athol towards Drumrocta. Did I get that right, Ian? You did indeed. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the Lauer. I mean, I've seen this one before at the show many years ago. It's into its third decade of life? Yeah, it will be about 33 years now. Layout was first built in 1988, appeared at Model Rail Scotland in 1989 for the first year. And since then, we've, you know, we've not been out every year with it. It's a fairly major undertaking to take this to a show. Last shows we did, we did a little clutch from 2015. Um, You've recently done some refurbishment work to it, haven't you? Yes. I mean, the, the kind of history behind this uh, it was my fa late father, myself, that built it. He was responsible for the buildings. He passed away 2015, and where the layout was stored, we've then moved it closer to me and taken the opportunity to start working around it. A layout this age, it's got to have some some sort of attention to detail and keep things yes. fresh on it. And from the back end, from the snow down, it's had some work on it. The next parts to work through the village, straighten the chimney pots, these kind of things, the bits and pieces, stand the people up straight. The village is a stunning piece of work. And it, am I right in thinking it's a scale it's model? It's a scale model. We're an actual scale model, worked from the open survey map of Blair Athol, which is in Perthshire, just north of Pilochry. Uh, there's been some condensing or otherwise we would have been, we wouldn't have let us in there would have been too much too much layout and not enough space for the spectators so the distance from the the golf course bridge to the tilt bridge is condensed from the bridge to the box is condensed but the village itself is to scale which is why it ends up the bridge is one of the you know big scenic highlights of the layout isn't it it is indeed it's it, it's a, this weekend it's a treat received a lot of uh, praise and attraction and it is the main network rail themselves refurbished that a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, it's great with, within Blair Arthur, you certainly me, you can actually walk underneath it on the beach area. One of the lovely, lovely things of the layout is it's it's double sided. So you've got yeah. this wonderful vista all the way through the station, yeah. through the um, the village, and then you've got the uh, the A9 going up into the snow scene. As, as we turn around at the end at the West Lodge of the castle, we always said that it left the actual for the typical wasn't possible to get it spot on so we've actually flipped everything about so instead of it being 
road, river, railway going north, we've got it the other way around so it works for us, but we've introduced lots of elements of notable interest that people will recognise and as such people come to the, you know, we'll get visitors saying, well, oh, that's the road we went to Aviemore on, there's such and such, we did that, we did that. The layout um, looks as though it might be a continuous loop layout, but it's not, is it's it? It's not indeed. To achieve the climb to Dromochter realistically, and we are pretty much on scale for the, for the, the incline, it's given us an, a situation where we've got double deck fiddle yards. There's nine odd tracks on the top, slightly less on the lower area because of the widths. So it means, effectively, the lower, lower fiddle yards is Perth in the south, the north yard's Inverness. So what goes up to Inverness generally comes back, sometimes with the same locomotives on it, sometimes different. It, it's, it, it just replicates the services because most of what goes through Blair Arthur on the Highland Main Line terminates in Perth or slightly beyond and will come back either same day, next day, uh, depending on what it is. So you've been doing some refurbishment work to get it back to the uh, the level that we see it at today. Have you got further plans for it? There is. There's, I mean, the back scene was a new addition. We'd, we'd never found anybody that had anything realistic enough. And these are now available printed. That one is a Forest Hills, I believe. And you know, there's, there's a few mirror images and stuff, but I feel it, you know, it's, it's very similar to the hill that's at the back of Blade Arthur. We've managed to kind of nudge it into place for that. Um, the other thing that's quite of note is that we're now up at over 1,200 trees in this layout. Thank you. And there was more needed to create areas where to blend real tobacco scene in places. So, oh, very good. Um, the other thing I like about the layout is that you can stand and watch the operation of it because you've got like a, a proper panel in place. The kind of history to the panel was, as, as an early teenager in the late 70s, early 80s, it was one of these things on holiday in Blair Arthur, which is where we started, why we started building in the first place, and the signalman in these days, you know, we wanted light to come up in the signal box and have a look. Well, that led to being up in the box. Every shift he was on, getting the opportunity to work levers, signals, points, pretty much everything. <laughs> um, so the control panel that we have is an exact replica of the signal box diagram, which has then been extended to suit our needs, because obviously we've got to control the trains as well as the signalling. Now on a weekend such as this, a three-day weekend yeah. effectively, um, you've been operating in different time periods. We have indeed. To try and create a bit of variety both for visitors who might come more than one day, certainly for the operators to prevent boredom, and take advantage of the fact that very little has ever changed in Blair Arthur. We elected to say right on Friday we've been in the Blue Grey era. We worked through introduction of super sprinters. Yesterday was more 90s intercity liveries and this morning we kicked off the Chieftain with the East Coast livery. We're now up to, not present day, we don't have an Azuma on there, uh, but we're, we're not a million miles away at that point. There's a superb layout with some wonderful stock running around it. How long does it take you to set up and take down? We arrived here about 20 past nine on Thursday morning. It take, took us, we were quick, it was 20 minutes to take it out of the back of the truck and it's a seven and a half ton truck it travels in. By lunchtime, we weren't, we weren't in a hurry, so by lunchtime it was set up ready for power. Tonight I would expect, we start dismantling at five, I'd like to think an hour or so we'll see it ready to go in the truck. Whether we can get the truck in or not at that point, I don't know because we are quite far into the hall. So there's, again, there's no real pressure and we're local. Um, it might be different if you were in Birmingham faced with a trip home, but at the moment it's, it's a 10 minute journey back to Springburn. Good broadcast voice you've got. DCC concept stand and how can you miss it with this brand new American themed layout and of course last time we spoke you had some new products we did and you're using them on this layout we are can you tell us a bit more about it I can yeah so the main products we're using on here uh, we're using our Zen black decoders we're using our ABC shuttle system so you'll see this loco here we'll come into the uh, head shunt here and it will automatically reverse we're using TMS, our track magnetic sensors, and they are changing the point motors behind the train so it can go up the next ladder section. We're using ESP, and that is transmitting the location of each of these locos onto the board that you see in front of you here. Uh, a 
apart from that, this is all stuff that you can get out of the box, put on your layout, and it works. So it's really, really easy and straightforward. And am I right in thinking it's all solderless? All solderless, yeah, it's all just, apart from onto the rail itself, yeah. of course. But yes, the uh, the LMIDs, which are the detectors, they're screw terminals. The track magnetic sensors are screw terminals, as is in the ESP. Of course, the Zen decoders are push fit, because it depends 21, 18, whatever you need. So yeah, all solderless, all good to go, yeah. And to those at home who haven't heard of ESP before, um, can you tell them about it? I mean, this mimic board, for example, it's not connected yeah. to anything, as far yeah. as I can tell. So yeah, this mimic panel here, as you can see, there are no wires connecting this to the layout. There's a small 12 volt battery in the back there and that's just powering that up. Um, ESP is a method of transmitting a digital accessory command from one place on your layout to another with no wires. You can use that in a control panel to change point motors on the layout, or in this instance, we're using it for track detection on the layout to report to a mimic panel here. It doesn't matter how you do it, it's just sending a standard digital command from one place to another. And what are some of the real world um, solutions that offers to home layouts? Brilliant ways. We've done a video previously, which some people may have seen, uh, but uh, there are also elements in terms of you can make a wireless control panel, so you can have that anywhere on your layout. Flick a switch, point motor changes. You can have wireless mimic, so you can see what routes have been selected. And again, no wires backwards and forwards between the layout and your control panel. And you can have, as you can see here, train detection on a wireless panel. Now that means you can have that up on the wall, out of the way, without worrying about thousands of wires going up to it. It means you can have a control panel that you can have on your work table, and you can move around the room with it. So it gives lots of real world advantages like that. Wonderful. And how much would it cost someone to implement that on an average size layout? Uh, well, <laughs> what's an average size layout? I mean, everyone's idea of average is different. But the, the actual boards that you would need, so to look at the actual components, there's one receiver board in here. The receiver boards are £50 each. Okay, so this uses a receiver board. The mimic that's in here is another £50. So this panel in terms of components is about £100 for the panel. The transmitters are £40 each, and each transmitter has three inputs. So that gives you some indication of, depending on how many inputs you need, that's going to change the, the price of the system. So I love it, because DCC Concepts always has that little gadget, little bit of electronic, which just excites, ignites the imagination of any layout. That's right, I mean, we've always looked at what the hobby does and what the hobby has to go through. And we say, well, how can we make this easier? The prime example is a mimic board. I mean, if you want to create a mimic board on a traditional layout, uh, just with this sort of detection system, we'll be looking at a couple of wires for each detector going to this panel. And when you consider the number of sections we've got here, that's a lot of wires going from the layout to the panel. If we can get rid of those wires and just have local wiring, then that makes life a lot easier for everybody. It also makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot if you find that one of the detectors isn't working, you know exactly where to go to. You're not tracing wires all the way through your layout. So it, it's about finding things that people find difficult and making them easier, and that's something we've always tried to do. And of course, for people like me who can't handle electrics, you're always at the end of a phone or we can visit your store in Settle. Absolutely, yes, you can. So we're open six days a week on the phone. You can get us on Messenger, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do video conferencing, if, as you also know. <laughs> uh, you can come down and see us. We just ask that you let us know that you're coming so we can make the place ready for you. Um, we've always got nice tea and coffee as well and good fish and chips. You do? <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, and of course, you'll find us at all the big shows as well. So you can always come up to us and ask for advice at shows. Uh, our latest stand, which we call the Mega Stand, as you can see, huge, huge. Um, so the Mega Stand actually has a, visit, a visitor conference area on there as well. So we have tables and chairs where you can sit down and discuss any issues that you've got, and we can come up with solutions for you as well, rather than trying to lean over a crowded table. So. Wonderful, Richard. As ever, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming, Richard. So what a fantastic exhibition, Mark. Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a long weekend, but it was a great weekend. Really enjoyed it, lots to see, uh, lots of new news that uh, we picked up over the course of the weekend. And some fantastic layouts as well, really good. So I think that brings us nicely to a, the end of another video. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much to the guys who organise Monorail Scotland. I'm looking forward to next year already. Don't forget, if you want to read more on all the announcements made, you can do in the latest Hornby magazine or on keymodelworld.com. Talking of keymodelworld.com, for our YouTube subscribers, we're offering a discount. You just have to click the button above Mark's head. Right, thank you very much for watching, as ever. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.